Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today, we have a great opportunity to connect with Surveyor Vicky Howe, who's the Principal Consultant for Propedia Consultancy. Thank you so much for being with us today, Vicky. It is my honor, Ernest. Excellent. Nice to be here. Well done. Vicky, before we start, and uh, one of the things that has always been on my mind to actually ask you is this. You look so young to be a surveyor. You must be one of the youngest. You must be actually uh, someone who's got a very, very youthful looks or you've, you've managed to be able to uh, find a lot of peace in the work that you do to keep that youthful look. How long have you been a surveyor? I've been a surveyor for about six years right now. Uh, yeah, about six, seven years right now. Okay. Ever and since how, I got my license. How long have you had Propedia? I had Propedia. This is my third year of having Propedia. Um, okay. Propedia is still a baby. It's yeah, prior to that, I've been in property industry for more than 10 years really, for more than 15 years. I started off when I was uh, just a teenager and after I got my license, I strive to open up my Propedia consultancy. I have to ask you, what does Propedia mean? Propedia means a property encyclopedia, which is our ultimate goal. Rather than selling a property to other people, we actually teach them how to buy property, how to invest into property. Uh, our ultimate goal is to teach people first before they buy their property. So that is the reason why our name called Propedia, uh, which is property encyclopedia, whatever you like to know about property, we will actually advise you. We, rather than an uh, agency, we actually uh, advisory company. But can I ask you, a lot of people when they buy, do they want to have all that other information? Do they want to know more or they just want you to get the best price that you can possibly get for that? Uh, why are you taking so many more steps to include that as part of your service? Actually, great deals are everywhere. You know, uh, I believe that with the information that is easily available, Everyone can actually Google online to find out what they need to know. But the problem is, when it comes to reality, there's particular problems that they face, they really don't know how to go about things. Like for example, what if they buy a property that has got a uh, late delivery? Uh, what should they do next? And how they go about to complain or to get back their insurance and so whatsoever. Um, I believe that unless you actually face the same issue, you will not know how to go about all these things. So these are the things that are not easily available on the uh, Google or you know anybody who doesn't know how to advise them. So we actually given all this kind of advice to people who doesn't know how to go about their issue with their property. And also, uh, although having to, to say that property, they just want to have the cheap property, so what if after they bought the property, they can't rent out their property? Uh, what's next? What can they do to, to build a portfolio? If they want to build a passive income, what are the methods that they need to do to build a passive income? So would it be correct to say that the cornerstone of your service offering is not just to facilitate the execution, but actually to educate as well and through education, the empowerment of the potential buyer or the potential investor is that they know what to do after that. Exactly, this is what we do. We actually start off from uh, educating the markets, the public, and most of the time, the things that we are doing is actually not uh, profitable to us. In fact, the courses that we run, um, a lot of students giving feedback that is worth more than uh, whatever they have paid for because a lot of courses doesn't provide food and whatnot. We provide three meals and in buffet styles and more. But the intention is to make sure that they come and learn first before they buy property. But again, uh, does this not just extend the period of when you actually make money for the company, so to speak? I mean, by putting so much effort in terms of training, does that make it easier for you or easier for the industry? Or how do you see this as an advantage to Propedia? Um, let's put it this way. This is my ultimate goal as well. And it's my passion to share about property. And although it doesn't make a lot, a lot, a lot of money, like, you know, I don't drive flashy cars and all that. But uh, one thing for sure is that this is part of my uh, contribution to the community. Um, although I make, it's very transparent. Uh, a lot of people who 
does event organizing, they, they know that roughly we make how much in a, 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 from a student. It's a couple of hundred. If we are lucky, we can get up to a thousand per student. But the intention over here is not to make a lot of money from that. It's to make sure that people don't get buying too much property that they can actually afford to. So that's the ultimate goal. Right, okay. Well, so you mentioned that you are spending a lot of time to do training or one of the cornerstones of what you're doing is actually to provide the information for training. Now with COVID and the lockdown is a situation whereby you're unable to actually have your classes or to go out and to teach or show the properties to your popular buyers. How do you actually partake in the transmission of that information and to keep your team motivated? Um, I feel that this is the best time to improvise ourselves. I just had a meeting with the rest of my agents and uh, to be honest, a lot of my agents are quite lost right now. What shall we do? We can't do viewing and all that. I say rather than you can't do it viewing, this is a good time for you to do cold call because people will not hang out on your phone. They really want someone to talk to at this moment in time and some idiot just call them up and you know, uh, one thing to talk to them, they feel free to talk. So I say this is a good time for you to do cold call, although you can't do viewing at the moment, but it's a good time to do cold call. And I'm told that um, while everyone has nothing else to do, they begin to surf on internet. Uh, they spend more time on internet. And this is the time that we can actually do some listing as well uh, on iProperty. Um, I talked to a few of my students uh, this few days and I feel that there are still a lot of purchaser in the market because a lot of my students are actually doing their homework on uh, property, what kind of property to buy, what kind of property not to buy. After attending the class, they have you know the urge to buy property and they know that this is the right time to buy property because the sellers are desperate at the moment. So when sellers are desperate at the moment, it's also easier for us as a negotiator to negotiate a good price for the buyer. Um, in terms of my business right now, I can't go out there and teach, but I can reach out to even more people on the positive side on the bright side, I can reach out to more people on the internet. Um, put it this way, we actually, instead of we have an offline uh, course, we also have an online course that uh, pretty much affordable for everyone. It's just a couple of hundred. If you have nothing else to do, you can go online and pay for this yourself. Everything is automatically, uh, it's all automatic system. You can watch it anytime you want. Uh, you can replay anytime you want for one whole year. Uh, how do you keep yourself busy, especially now as well? Because you can't move and you can't go out. Uh, I know you're homebound per se. Uh, <laughs> yourself, how do you keep, how do you use this time, especially when you have a lot of time right now? What do you do? Actually, I'm very, very busy right now because all this while, I have a lot of things that I want to achieve and I've not been achieving it. And Ernest, I believe that you know that I always tell you I want to write a book. <laughs> I want to write a book. And the book is not out yet after so many years because I'm of my busy schedule. I reach out to more people that I can. I have contacted people that I have not contacted for the past few months. Um, and also on top of that, I'm actually in the midst of writing my own books and uh, start out with restructuring my company structure. And I know that this is going to be an ultimate change is a revolution for every company right now and it forces us to use more on the technical uh, technology parts and I don't want to feel left out as well so this is a time for me to look into this part whereby the technology is very helpful um, I see everyone on Facebook uh, taking picture of their Zoom meetings I've never actively use Zoom all this while and I always want to have a physical meeting and so that I can see the other party's expression and body language but I think you know come at come to this kind of moment Zoom has been very very helpful so I'm looking into other methods of expanding my company rather than just being physical uh, you know all, all the things that has to run offline do you think that after this event is over, after the lockdown period is over, do you think that business will go back to how it was before? Or do you think that there is a shift in how people perceive information and connect? To be honest, I have doubt that business will go back as usual. Because I see that the bank will run differently. After so many months of losing business, I think bank will be very aggressive after that. 
And I see that if the bank will be aggressive, I will see that there are a lot of loan will be approved after that. Um, and I also see that a lot of desperate seller after the six months before payment period. And also I see that a lot of people are in the hurry to grab some of the properties. Um, it will be a very busy period for all of us, but the running, the way of each agency runs will be very, very different. Because I see that this will change the entire way that the agency, the, the con, uh, uh, conservative agency used to run, this has to change. So it will not be as usual, but probably to say that we put ourselves inside a pressure cooker for months, and after a month, when you took out the cover of the pressure cooker, the whole thing was split up. So there are good things that will be splitting out. There are bad things will be splitting out as well. So yeah. Okay. And I will see that after that, you know, people are desperate to get more money and crime rate might increase as well. Oh, okay. Can I ask you then, if for instance, uh, one was thinking to become a negotiator, what would be the new skill that would be required? after this event is over. And because also this event is during the time when the economy is pretty soft, um, there'll be people who also are looking for other opportunities to make money legally and not increase the crime rate, as you said. Um, what do you think would be the skills uh, that would make them or give them a chance to succeed? To be honest with you, uh, on, uh, Ernest, a lot of people are looking at alternative way to replace uh, this property markets. I've seen so many technology trying to replace the property market. And I see that it will be very hard because this, you are talking about buying a few hundred thousand properties, you know, few hundred thousand ringgit property and few millions uh, worth of items. It is not something like, you know, selling clothes online or something like that. Many countries have been trying to do that. They don't want to have a middle person, which is the agents or the negotiator to be in their way and so that they can get cheaper property. But unfortunately, because we are talking about trust, that's true. Technology, there's no trust and human touch here. It is very unlikely to be able to replace by technology. Um, so having said that, if we are talking about um, how this thing's going to run using technology, it, it is close to impossible at the moment. Um, yeah, people still need to speak to one another. Uh, they still have to view the property themselves unless uh, I, I'm talking about, you know, technology not completely replaced by human being but technology is an add-on uh, thing like you know we are systems and all this this is going to be uh, something fun for the purchaser or the tenants to have you know you know what if you want to view it right now i can show you it right now this is the link click on it you know this is the how the uh, the thing's gonna look like if you like it we can arrange a viewing you know this can get a confirmation on, uh, you know, 50% confirmation on the tenant whether they are keen about it or not. You also auto filter the rest of the tenants that are um, playing around. Um, true. Thank you so much for that insight. But uh, as a person wanting to come on board into this industry, what do you think the new skills would be like? What would the oh, yes. quiet skills uh, be? Uh, okay. On on top of trust and human touch, I'm talking about um, people who are very perseverance. You know, uh, these are the things that technology cannot replace them. Okay. So, I think one very important for any people who are doing sales, not just real estate negotiator, uh, one thing that they must have is uh, being perseverance and uh, consistency. A lot of deals are closed because of the consistency. Um, they they don't mind. Uh, they don't mind about their ego, their pride. They just want to get the sales no matter what. And you know, the buyer just say, "Okay, I trust you." Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is that in order to succeed, you got to be able to look at technology and make technology your friend. You must be able to adapt to the technological advances at a particular point in time. Uh, what yeah. you're also saying is to develop that trust with the client in order for you yeah. to be able to uh, serve the client well and of course the persistence and perseverance the third factor which is equally important to the first two would that be correct yes um a lot of agents will think that i do not know how to speak proper english i can't speak proper mandarin i can't be a good salesperson but salesperson the main criteria of being a salesperson is not how well you speak it's how you manage to 
uh, persuade the person to give you the check and they are giving it happily you know so this are a lot to do with how you you persuade them how do you make sure that whatever negative mindset that they have about this property is answered and they feel secure about giving the check to you are people generally afraid to buy at this point in time do you find um well there are 80 20 rules here whereby you know 80 percent of the people are the followers and the 20 percent of the people are willing to take the risk and out of this 20 percent of the people in the market these are the people who know that these are the market whereby you need to get in you need to tap on this bus to get on to uh you know a, cap a high capital appreciation where else the, of the rest of the 80 percent of the people will only buy when they see the market is going up that is the wrong move so yes there are still 20 percent of the people in the market that has been sourcing for property right now okay lastly i would like to ask you as well when you actually coach your team and you grow your team and you uh, get them to coach others as well what is the number one factor that you see that needs to be transmitted from team lead yourself to people below you what do you want them to absorb from you as the critical core skill that they must have um in terms of leadership i think one thing that they need to have is they has a leader they have to be they have to show up they have to show up as a leader in other words it's like you know i'm telling my leader right now it's not the time to rest it's a time to brush up and on the other hand if i'm sitting down here and watching drama and I'm not showing up or anybody call me up, I won't be answering to them. Um, this is really a bad leadership. So no matter who is in my team right now, the number one thing that they need to do, whether you are downline or you are upline or you are a leader, you have to show up uh, no matter what. Uh, so this is the thing that I want them to build as a culture in the, in the company as well. Yeah. Okay, but you mentioned something just now about brush up. What do you want it to brush up on? right now because uh, of the show years. up show, show up, up and brush up yeah um i just had a couple of minutes ago i just had my uh, uh zoom meeting with my agent so i said to them about this 15, 14 days of extension take it has a time for you to brush up to to improve yourself because some of them they have fear on speaking english they can't speak english properly so some of them are not very uh well versed with technology i think this is a good time that you you uh, hands on with what is facebook about uh, facebook ha can do wonders of things but if you do not know how to advertise you don't know how to leverage on this platform it is a waste so rather than you know watching dramas or doing something else why not just take this 14 days to do advertisement on facebook and brush up your skill i think that it will be very very helpful okay and looking forward into uh, after this entire episode is over, where do you see your business going to? Are you going to be looking at more specialized uh, engagements uh, for your for your company and your team? I.e., are you specializing in projects? Are you specializing in commercial? Are you specializing in sub sale? Are you looking at different components, or are you trying to also see whether you have different teams or different aspects of your business? Um, all this while, I've been doing a lot of projects, uh, which is one of my strengths. Um, and also I will continue to do project. I will be continue doing what I'm doing the best, but the only difference is that probably a different approach from before. Um, it may be a improvised version of Vicky How rather than, you know, the more conservative one. Okay. And of course the team members that you are also bringing and building together, um, I'm pretty sure as well, you're also putting them through some training program that you devise or you're asking them to take some of the training programs as well to build up their skills. Uh, just as an insight, what does Propedia uh, train your team members on? Um, every month we have a training. Um, every month we give them a different kind of training. Either we will hire someone in to train if I'm, uh, if I'm not very familiar with that uh, particular skills. Uh, most of the time, I will train them myself. So what we will train them on is either sales skills, how they speak to the customer, how they do cold call, um, how they need to screen through their customer before um, making sure that the customer will place a check. So how we screen through is by uh, teaching them how to see their loan eligibility before they uh, get their check. 
so that the customer will not have to you know be disappointed to find out that their loan is rejected Okay, these are the skills that we teach it on to the agents as well. So these are for the new agents or this is for everybody as well? For everybody. So everyone that comes in every month, we have got a, a training. But of course, this month, uh, we put it everything on the pause and next month as well. And we start moving it on the in, in May. Yeah, we will start moving another training in May. Are you planning to look at different parts of Malaysia to open up Propedia as well? Uh, as in what kind of Branch, branches branches um to be honest i i'm not looking out to expand my companies in terms of branches i think branches locality wise it has lose its importance in property industry um just put it this way i used to sell london properties but i'm not in london I used to sell a uh, Thai property, but I'm not in Thailand. You don't have to have a present there to be selling that area property. Unless specifically we want to do Penang properties, but I'm not looking at Penang right now. I'm not looking at Johor right now. So there's no uh, intention of branching it out. But rather than that, I will be more than happy to uh, increase my numbers of salesperson. Okay. Uh, one of the other questions that I have always been curious enough to ask you is this Is there a difference in dealing with a person who's got a surveyor title and say uh, Someone who's just a normal negotiator. Let's not talk about title and then one of is just negotiator. What what extra do you bring to the table? Is this a task question? <laughs> it's not. It's just I'm very intrigued because I, I know that the work that you guys do is so much more in terms of the background information, the knowledge, the research that goes there. How does that come out when you actually deal uh, with customers that really want to be knowledgeable in before they do anything, before they give you the check? Actually, yeah, you're right. When uh, we speak to client, client, they are not stupid. They are very, very smart. They know uh, what they are doing partially. Okay, another partial, um, they, they really need someone to advise them. So if someone that is newbies coming to sell them projects or properties, they will not be impressed. Okay, um, I have, I myself actually look around uh, showrooms to buy properties as well. And I'm not very impressed when someone actually give me wrong information. Um, it, it is actually very misleading. And when it comes to whether I have an SR title or not, um, the importance is there, but a lot of people do not know what SR means. Some people thought that it's my, uh, it's my name given by my parents, but it is not. It's actually, uh, I think, uh, it, it should be educating the public what, what is SR uh, it means to people because it's not many people having this title. And plus, they do not know what is the importance of SR in the market. So the title itself, it doesn't mean a lot. But when I mention to a lot of people that I'm actually a valuer, they know that, wow, valuer, you must at least know some certain degree of knowledge about property. So that actually gave me a advantage, a, a unfair advantage on uh, being a surveyor. I think also because when you are dealing with big sums and you look at international buyers, uh, there's a lot of other choices that you can go for as well. So having the SR would definitely give them uh, comfort in knowing that when you give a proposal, there is actually a basis behind it. Yes, in fact, yes, it is. And when we actually propose for some uh, projects or whatnot, um, the developer are very smart. They know that SR is not easily obtained. And they also know that some of the agency are not their own license. They tend to be very careful when they screen through the agency as well. Of course, they want result uh, as well, but they do not want someone to simply just sell their properties. And that gives me an unfair foundation in terms of this. Yeah. Understood. Vicky, can I just ask you, and this is for just advice for those who are watching and if they are negotiators, Looking at another 14 days of downtime, what would be the top three things that they can do if they haven't really gotten the insights from you already? That's number one for negotiators who are now at downtime. Number two is for people who are looking for career move, career change. What is the top three skills that they need to have before they come and consider whether real estate negotiation is the place for them to be at? So the first question is, uh, what is the top three? For the negotiators, now that they have another 14 days, what do they do? 
The second one is uh, people who are looking for another Top career. three for people who are looking to move. Yeah. Okay. Um, for negotiator, the top three skills that I think at this moment, 14 days that you have to do is first to brush up your sales skill. Your sales skill. Um, I think some is very disappointing. They can't, they don't even know how to place out their name card. I think this is the first impression that they have to give it to the people. Um, by reading books, I think it may help. You can also go on Google to find out. I think these are the crucial time, extremely crucial to brush up when people, other people are resting, you should be brushing up yourself. And secondly, I think it is very crucial to even start studying your projects. If you're doing projects, it's time for you to learn about your projects. What, how, what is the unique selling point for you to pr- push your properties? And of course, you must understand that uh, for you to sell the properties, you must first of all, you like the property. If you can't convince yourself to buy the property, how are you going to convince other people to buy your property as well? The third thing that all the agents right now have to do is to um, to not let go of their momentum. A lot of people right now, they are resting. They think that it's okay. Uh, 14 days later, we are going to start work. But it's now not just 14 days. It's already add on to four weeks. Four weeks later, whatever habits that we have right now is going to generate permanently after that. So if someone is just going to slack at home and uh, watch drama series or watch Netflix, 30 days later, they will they will lose all their momentum to work harder. So right now, if you are working harder than before, your momentum is going to heat up and after the MCO, you are just going to ride straight outside and close deals. Yep. And the so, second part? The, th- the three things that I will advise uh, people who are looking to move on. Um, I think the industry that they work is very, very important. They need to work in an industry that technology cannot replace them as a human being. Um, we know that right now there are so many things that can be replaceable. Um, there's a word say that you know uh, not, not a human being is indispensable so I think it's quite true um, technology is coming to replacing a lot of people even my house right now I don't have a maid because I find it's really unnecessary I I have a maid that I pay 2,000 over ringgit per month and she's sleeping at home when we are working and now what I have at home is robots I bought two robots and put one downstairs and one upstairs, it actually cleaned up my entire house very sucker clean. So um, my first advice for you is you are moving on, look for something that you are not replaceable. Um, something to do with your brain, you're very smart, or it's a skill that you have that nobody can replace you. Or you can actually combine together with IT so that you can work, uh, you can collaborate with IT so that you can work even better. So I think that is something very important. And second of all, for those who are moving on, um, right now, I think sales is one of the very lucrative industry. No matter what kind of sales you are doing, sales is very lucrative. Um, In terms of sales, you you do not want to go into some industry that is technology is replacing them. Like for example, we foreseen that one day uh, insurance is going to be totally replaced by technology because this is already happening in other countries like UK and US many many years back when I started buying insurance it's already from internet so in the future all these products are the same so all they have to do is just to pay money online um, so you need to start if you want to get rich fast uh, not, not to say get rich fast uh, you want to earn more, you have to go into sales. And the third thing is that people who are moving on, I think um, the attitude that you want to move on is very important. It's constantly wanting to learn. I have heard about a few candidates who comes to my office to interview and their mindset is my last company, uh, they are doing something wrong. They belated the company they think that they are very smart um, if you think that you are very smart you are going to any else company other company you won't be having a, a important part 
important role for you to play because you were never constantly learning. You think that you are already there. So I think for everyone that is moving on, you need to have a humble side of you, eating the humble pie and move on to, to continue learning. Um, another one thing that is very important is that a lot of uh, staff or a lot of employees who works, they think very highly of, uh, I mean, themselves and also pace, the pace, the salary play uh, important roles. Uh, rather than that, I think if you're young, you're 20 old years old, you do not have a lot of commitment. Take this period of working has a time for you to learn and study how to improve yourself. Um, because after that, when you have commitment, you have kids, you won't be able to do this kind of things. You won't be able to become an intern to learn. Coming from the learning part is very important. Okay. Okay. So let me recap what you said so that I've got, gotten all the points in. For negotiators who are now experiencing a downtime, uh, brushing on their skills, sales skills is the number one thing that they should be focusing on and not wasting the time. Then brushing up on product knowledge is really, really important. And to have that activities continue through despite this 14 plus 14 days so that the momentum is maintained. So when this thing is over, they can hit the ground running and running hard. Would that be correct? Yes. Excellent. And then for people looking at alternatives, is uh, one of the first things that you should have is actually choosing an industry where they are not replaceable or not easily replaceable, where they are able to bring in their attitude, they have the correct attitude and the correct mindset with humility and therefore in always wanting to learn or able to learn, that's where they can grasp and reach out and be effective in the next industry that they are in as well. Would that be correct? Yes. Well done. Uh, last but not least, now that you are homebound and I know that you have kids and a husband and everybody's in a small confined area, everybody's in one home, how's that coming along at home? Um, we are still sane, <laughs> surviving. <laughs> um, I think this is the wonderful time for me to get closer to the kids, because most of the times, uh, I, I, what I do every week is that I spend Saturday and Sunday just for my family. I'm not going out anywhere, just for the family. But it's only two days a week. It's not sufficient. I don't know how their improvement is. But uh, for this whole week, I see my daughters has grown so mature. Suddenly, they've become so mature. And of course, uh, in terms of being with my husband, um, it also draw closer, too close, I think. Okay, I won't tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. but on the, you know, whether we quarrel or not, that's not so much because we are already so used to each other's temperament. Okay, so, so you're yeah. spending the time to also build your relationships, which normal days you'd be very busy. That's great. And everything's cute. Yeah, and you're still closing sales. Wow, well done. Oh, yes. <laughs> Lastly, are your negotiators closing sales right now still? Yes. In fact, they are uh, still working hard on a few sales. Um, few of them know that the MCO is coming. Okay. So I think it was last week, Tuesday or Monday, mm. they were making a, a lot of appointments on uh, viewing and whatnot. So after the MCO, they actually closed the, uh, call up the, the tenants and call up the uh, landlord so that they can be able to close what whatever that is outstanding. Yeah, so they still close sales and rental as well. That's exactly what you're saying. Keep up the momentum. Don't stop. Yes. Continue. Continue through. Well done. So thank you so much for spending time with us. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a very interesting interview with a very young, vivacious and energetic young lady whom I don't know how they, she juggles family life, uh, running an agency and running a business at the same time. But I take my hat off to you, Vicky. You, you've really stepped up into a very big That's role. my question. You know, um, I know that a lot of people will complain about doing housework, uh, cooking and all that. But these are my passion. If I treat taking care of my kids, doing the housework has my passion, passion and I enjoy doing it. There's no complaint and I'm doing it better every day. Well done. 
thanks again for giving us this opportunity to have a sneak peek into what's happening in Biggie House Mind and also with Propedia Agency. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of opportunity if you look for it. There's a lot of information if you look for it. The question here is what are you going to do with the time that's on your hands? So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch up with you in the next round. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.